Hello and welcome to Darlington train station. Now today's journey is going from Darlington to just up the road to Durham. Uh, just to have a look at points of interest, the cathedral, the marketplace and such like. Um, we did start the journey off from Thornaby to Darlington, but there is no direct train from Thornaby to Durham. So we have to get off here and change. Um, here's our train here now. This is a Trans Pennine Express class 802 and that will take us directly to Durham. And it takes around about 20 minutes, I think. I've decided to start doing um, overdubs on videos just to get a bit more information on places we visit, uh, the local history, and just my thoughts on certain things. Uh, just to add, as I say, a bit more interest to the video and a bit more depth to them rather than just visual and music. This train here was, um, it was quite uh, full at the time. Uh, but luckily we'd booked reserved seats so we did have a seat just to Durham which is not too bad with it only being say 15 20 minutes up the road so if there isn't a chair uh, to sit in you can just stand and um, obviously watch the scenery go by um, but obviously if you're going somewhere like Darlington to Edinburgh you definitely need a seat you can't stand the entire time for that uh, we'll be getting off in a minute uh, it's a very nice looking place it's got a cafe there uh, seating as you can see um, and great for train spotters there are quite a lot of different style of trains um, also if you don't forget to recycle don't be throwing the rubbish on the floor keep uh, the city clean it's always a bonus but yeah today's video I'm going to be talking um, in bits and pieces really most of it's self-explanatory, um, but there are certain points that I, I might sort of expand on just to uh, give you a bit more knowledge of the city of Durham. Now coming up now is Framwell Gate Bridge. Now this was first built in 1127 and the bridge was actually financed by Bishop Ranulf Flambard. Uh, which was a, a Norman of it was a Norman of French heritage basically uh, was skill, a skilled administrator and temporary ruler who would raise the revenue to complete the construction of the city of Durham itself but this included the cathedral the castle the palace green the city walls and of course the bridge we're on now from Wilgate Bridge And as we walk up here, this is the marketplace just up here. You can just see in the distance. Uh, the marketplace, it features a town hall. There is a guild hall and up there, there is three statues, which you'll see in a moment. Either side of this walkway are shops, um, as you can see, Holland and Barrett. Um, a couple of them are closed down, unfortunately. There is a Tesco's there if you wanted to get yourself a sandwich or a meal deal. Uh, to take around with you on this particular journey. Don't forget to get your club card points. But as you can see, this is a very historic city. Uh, the marketplace especially is very pleasing to the eye, shall we say. Um, there's a church just in the distance, which we'll see closer in a minute. And as I walk into Durham Marketplace, um, you can see there's a statue just central in the video. Uh, this is Charles William Vane Stewart. Now he was the third Marcus of Londonderry. Now there is some controversy regarding Charles William Vane Stewart and it was all down to sort of irate tradesmen, lawsuits, angry miners, but also an uproar regarding the horse's rear end, which is a bit strange. Angry about a horse's bum. Now this is the Market Tavern. It was originally called the City Tavern. This establishment became popular from the 1850s. Uh, a year on, an Act of Parliament allowed meat, fish and poultry, making Durham a focal point. In 1853, the water was deemed unfit to drink, so people d decided to drink ale instead. And it was renamed Market Hotel in 1865. In 1871, the Durham Miners Association was formed there and by 1940, it was the only pub in Durham. Now this is the Market Hall. This was once the site of a 15th century townhouse of the Neville family. 
Uh, unfortunately, this was demolished in 1851. The Neville family, or the House of Neville, was a leading force in English politics in the later Middle Age. Uh, the Market Hall uh, these days hosts 40 independent traders, selling foodstuffs, jewellery, toys, homewares, and more. There's also a cafe situated on the first floor, which can actually be accessed via either stairs or a lift. Uh, we'll be going in there uh, in just a moment. But as you can see there, there is uh, St Nicholas Church. And here we go into the marketplace. So you'll see exactly what's being sold in here. You'll see the size of the building itself. Uh, and if when you go through this little archway here, if you just sort of look up, I think it's a bit too shiny and bright, but just on the first floor at the back there, that's where the cafe is situated. Uh, yeah, here, we, as you can see, they sell fruit and veg, toys, uh, unique and um, antique jewelry, um, Basically just everything you would find in a normal city or town uh, marketplace. There's a DIY. As you can see from the top here, there's quite a lot of stalls and food places. Um, it's an excellent place just to spend half an hour or more, just to sort of have a look and see what is for sale. Um, there's some amazing things. Um, I mean, there's a lot of different things. Uh, you can also buy a DVD. Do you remember Kess? Did you, are you around that age where Kess was played when you were at school? It was also one of those um, videos that you would just watch and giggle. It was just a, an excellent film. But yeah, as I was saying before, there's some excellent things. These lights, I think, are amazing. I can't remember the name of them, so I'll probably pop a, pop a text thing in on the screen just to let you know. But yeah, just look at the, the craftsmanship and the, the, the colours and everything in there. They're just... Yeah, I wouldn't mind if you would. But here, here's a stall directory here. Uh, this gives you an idea of exactly what is in the building. Pretty much anything you, you'd want if you wanted food or um, presents for the family to, to do cards and even guitars in there. Definitely worth, worth, the, uh, worth a visit. Now this is St Nicholas Church. Um, the original church is sort of been founded around about the early 12th century by Ranulf Flambard, who was the Prince Bishop of Durham. He was the one that also built the Framwell Gate Bridge, and you'll hear about him a bit later regarding the cathedral. The building was extensively modified over the centuries um, to what you see today. I only filmed the inside part because they had some sort of a crash or uh, children's daycare thing in there and I didn't really want to go in there filming while there's children and families in there so I just thought I would just do the internal section of the entrance and just the out bits so you can see the statues and the detail in the walls and the, uh, the ceiling. This is Neptune, obviously those that know who Neptune is, he's the Roman god of the sea. And this was given to the city of Durham in 1729 by George Bowes, uh, Gibside. It symbolises is the aspirations of the time to improve navigation to the River Wey and Durham's link to the sea. It stood on a water fountain in the marketplace previously, uh, but then it was relocated to Warden Park in 1923 when the fountain was no longer needed, and it was returned to the marketplace back in 1986. As we're walking up here, this is Owen Gate. Uh, leading up to uh, Palace Green, uh, where the cathedral is situated. And as we walk into the green um, in a moment, uh, the castle itself, the entrance uh, is on the right. When you turn around up here and to the right, um, the, in the right you will be able to see the, um, the entrance to the castle. Uh, in the, so the World Heritage Centre is to the left of that castle. Um, which you'll see in a moment. I'll wait till it gets to that piece and I'll uh, point it out verbally. So as you stand on Palace Green here, um, where that van is, if you go around there and to the right, uh, that's where the, uh, the castle is. The World Heritage Centre is right ahead, as you see there. Um, and that basically um, just gives you information about Durham and its heritage. It gives you events and tourist information of the city itself and places of interest. Uh, it was originally a par palace park fortress and this was been in a place of worship and scholarship for about a thousand years with the world leading university and a cloister school 
which was since 1414. Now this is Durham Cathedral. The Durham Cathedral was built around about 1093. This was undertaken by Ranulf Flambard who also built Framwell Gate Bridge, the earliest crossing of the River Weir from the town. And as we walk down this path there are some remnants of um, statues, monuments and uh, I believe there are also some graves around about the uh, exterior of the uh, cathedral itself. And front centre there, there is the main entrance and on those big doors there is a knocker and that knocker is called the Sanctuary Knocker and uh, that was used by those who murdered in self-defence or broke out of prison uh, where they would rap out and knock on the door and they would be granted 37 days of sanctuary where they could either reconcile with their enemies or they could basically just plan their escape. It's been nailed down now so, so I'm guessing it, uh, being done that way because people would just kept banging on it um, just, to, just to keep it in its, in its form. As we go into Durham Cathedral you can see the amount of detail there is. There's artwork, sculptures and even the architecture is just amazing for what it was in the time and as you can see there the stained glass windows as well. I would recommend at least an hour and a half to two hours on your visit just to make sure you get um, plenty of time just to see all the detail and everything that's in there, the beautiful woodwork, the stained glass windows, the chapels, there's just so much in there to, just to enjoy. I mean just in there as you can see there's a sculpture here, there's a, a piece of art behind, um, there's plenty of seating just to sort of just take a moment just to sort of see everything before you actually head into the main cathedral itself. Now as we go into Durham Cathedral, the main area, um, you can see this is just a, a wooden surround to the baptismal font. I will show you that in more detail later in the video, uh, but as we look down you can see the beautiful uh, craftsmanship of the roof and all the way down the hallway which is also, it's called a nave basically, um, but that hosts um, a lot of areas of interest such as St Cuthbert Shrine, there's the choir, Galilee Chapel, um, obviously there's a lot of woodwork, uh, the cathedral woodwork is just amazing. Um, when you look at that there's so much detail in, in what it is. Um, what else is there? There's a prior Castell's clock which is just, that just needs at least 10 minutes just to appreciate the craftsmanship of that. It's just a, a beautiful piece of, uh, of, of art I would say. Uh, there's also um, a cathedral organs. Um, as I said, mentioned a moment ago, there's a lot of um, stained glass windows with a, a variety of different scenes. Um, but just looking at them, you can just see the craftsmanship and the amount of time it must have taken just to just to sort of build just a single frame, let alone the actual full window itself. And there's the cloisters, there's a chapter house, and the Neville screen and tomb, which I will discuss in more depth later on in the video. Um, but well, I'll just be quiet now and I'll just uh, pop in and out just to let you know certain points of interest. Uh, but I'll let you just enjoy the video for now. This area that I'm going into now, this is called the choir. 
um, which sounds a bit like a singing choir. But in here, obviously there's a lot of seating area, but when you go in here, you can actually see the detail of the woodwork above. Uh, there's, there's organ pipes um, on the right hand side as well. But it just looks amazing when you when you go past it quickly you don't actually see much of it um, but when you slow down and, and sort of go up the steps and just have a look at the actual detail of each little piece um, it really must have taken years to, to make such a beautiful thing but as, as i scroll up there you go you can see the, uh, the actual pipes of the organ As you walk around Durham Cathedral you will notice there are quite a few um, tombs dedicated to certain people around the, uh, around the area, um, important people, which I will discuss later on in the video. And as we continue down, we'll go into the Chapel of Nine Altars. This is called the Chapel of Nine Altars because within it, it has, you've guessed it, nine altars. But it's also got a lot of stained glass window work. As you can see there, there's lots and lots of windows here. And there's a circular window, which you'll see a bit later on. But each, each sort of piece and each window, um, you can just appreciate the amount of work and effort has gone into each individual piece. Um, it is truly amazing dotted around the place, not just here, but throughout the, um, the cathedral itself. There's a lot of artwork and sculptures. Uh, unfortunately, I can't remember the artist and piece name of this one. Um, if you know it, uh, do us a favor and uh, just drop it in the comments. I usually take pictures of, um, of each sort of point of interest so I can write a little bit about them, but um, I completely forgot to do this one. But it is an amazing piece, seen as it's just carved out of, uh, of wood. This is the monument of Bishop Van Mildert. And as I scroll up, you will see another fantastic piece of um, glasswork of a huge stained glass window there. As I head up these stairs, this is St Cuthbert's Shrine. Now St Cuthbert's Shrine within here, this is where St Cuthbert is buried. Uh, it would have been adorned with jewels, rich embroidered cloth uh, and fineries basically before, I think it's around about the mid 16th century uh, when it was stripped of all its riches. But you can still appreciate the craftsmanship, the workmanship of the uh, woodwork there um, and the um, cloth work, what do you call it? Um, <laughs> Of, of each piece it is it's, it's just a nice place to just sit and um, I don't know sit with your thoughts maybe prayer um, or just appreciate everything that surrounds it here's a little bit of history uh, regarding St Cuthbert's Shrine. So if you want to just uh, pause the video and give that a read, um, that's totally up to you. But it just gives you a bit more insight into the shrine itself. And as I said a, a moment before, they all have little tombs dedicated to people. Now this one's Bishop Thomas Hatfield who died in 1381. Again, just 
beautiful craftsmanship just to honour people of importance. Now here is what I mentioned a moment ago. This is Prior Castle's clock. Now as you can see, I mean I'm not too sure you can see the, the, the detail in this, but it's just the colour and the design of it is just, I think it's spectacular. It is a really beautiful piece. The area I'm walking down now is called the nave. It's like the, the central part of the church itself. Um, I'm just walking now just to show you the detail of the columns and the ceiling and also the, the sheer size of the cathedral's interior. When I get down to the end of the nave, or the walkway, whatever you want to call it, you can see the beautifully made wooden structure that surrounds the baptismal font. I just had to check if there's any water in it, but no, bone dry. Walking back up to the central part of the cathedral, I just decided to just film the columns and the archways of the interior of the, the cathedral itself, just to give you an idea of sort of the scale of things and the beauty of, of, of the design of it, really. I'm just heading back into the choir area of the uh, cathedral. This is a place where people can just, well, visit and just see the actual architecture or even just spend five minutes to have a little prayer. But as you can see, it's just beautiful and stunning. The floor, the walls, the woodwork, the ceilings, everything is just, it's just made to perfection really. DLI or Durham Light Infantry. The Durham Light Infantry were first established as the 16th Regiment of Foot Soldiers in 1758. The Durham Light Infantry were formalized as such in 1881. It first saw action in Egypt and in South Africa during the Boer War. The Durham Light Infantry played an important role in the First and Second World Wars, fighting in every major battle. With more than 12,600 dead and thousands wounded, the regiment was an extremely important part of County Durham's life. And in 1922, the regiment officers and cathedral chapter decided to create a memorial chapter in the cathedral itself, which is what you can see here. Within the Memorial Chapel um, at Durham Cathedral, there is a book of remembrance showing you all of the names on particular days of the poor souls that died from the First and Second World Wars of the Durham Light Infantry.
This is Reverend Dr. James Britton. He was the headmaster of the King's School in Durham. He was also the professor of holy theology within the Durham Cathedral itself. I mentioned the Neville family before, the marketplace. Now the Neville family were a notable local family whose name is indefinitely etched in Durham's history due to their role in the English victory of 1346 against the Scots, tellingly known as the Battle of Neville's Cross. The screen earned them the Lord Neville, John the privilege of being buried inside the cathedral nave, a rare honour, which is what you can see there. Here's a memorial for the Durham Miners, uh, dedicated in 1947 to the Durham Miners who gave their lives in the pits of this country and those who worked in darkness and dangers of those pits. Again, this is just an example of the uh, woodwork workmanship, would you call it, um, of the actual cathedral itself. Just the detail of, of each piece, but this in particular is just a beautiful piece going up to the actual organ pipes. Here's a little wooden model of the cathedral itself just to show you all of the areas within it and on the right hand side there is there is a floor plan so you can kind of see where you are in relation to this this particular map is situated sort of towards the back of the map This area of Durham Cathedral is called Cloister and in the central part there is called the Cloister Garth. Now if you're a fan of Harry Potter franchise and you can remember the first two films of Harry Potter uh, you might recognize this particular place. I believe it's to do with um, Ron and something to do with some bad spell regarding slugs I think was filmed in this particular area and another scene where it was snowing but there is a information um, placard poster um, towards the end of this video which gives it a bit more detail This is the chapter room. Now this chapter room has been, it's been built and it's been modified and then rebuilt as it previously was. Um, I can't remember on the dates, but I was told that around the central part of the walls, there was actually another floor built there. So this was actually on two floors. One floor, which you can see here, with all the seating around would have stayed as it was but then above I believe was the sleeping quarters of monks um, I might be wrong on that but if you know the story let us know in the comments but uh, there was a woman telling somebody else regarding it and she just basically said that it was made into two rooms and then after an amount of time they decided that it was a bad idea and changed it back to this huge room that it is you might know this room Again, from the Harry Potter films, this was the setting of Professor McGonagall's classroom, and that was also in the first two Harry Potter films. Not only that is, the cathedral's been known um, for another film in the Avengers Endgame. There's a scene in that where one of the characters walks down one of the hallways.
This is the information that I was mentioning earlier regarding the, the Harry Potter films and the Avengers. This just gives you a bit more information um, on what happened, what scenes there were. So if you end up watching those films again and it gets to that point, then you know exactly where it was filmed here in Durham Cathedral. So that concludes my Durham City trip. Hope you've enjoyed it. As I say, this is my first ever voiceover um, doing a video. Usually I just do um, video with some music and a little bit of text to kind of give you an idea of what, where I am and what things are. But I just wanted to kind of add a bit more to my videos and give a bit more information on things. Um, so hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully you've got this far. And if you have, I would really appreciate it. Um, give us a like and a subscribe if you want and um, any comments I will read them and um, uh, criticism or just praise whichever I'm, uh, I'm, I'm fine I want to kind of build this channel and make it more interesting so if anybody's got any tips regarding this then um, I'll take everything on board um, this is my train home well not this one because obviously I've just missed it but the next one is going to be my train it's an LNER class 801 it's going back to Darlington so thanks for for watching if you've got as I say if you've got this far then I really appreciate it, it is it is a learning curve for me this voiceover thing is my first time so over time I will make it a bit more light-hearted and a few jokes and you know just sort of not be robotic and um, just shout facts at you so yeah so thanks for watching and uh, the next video will be the Durham walk I believe which is just the outskirts of Durham um, and just Pitch, a bit more picturesque so yeah so thanks for watching and see you in the next one take care and goodbye